My name is Chris Sachs. I'm the Vice President of Client Success at SEO Clarity. And today I'm really excited to have a chance to talk with Jeff Smith, uh, an SEO that I've known for, well, going on nine years now. So uh, without further ado, Jeff, welcome. Thanks, Chris. So, Good to uh, be here. Yeah, absolutely. Love to have you here and would love to, uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about your background and what you currently do. Uh, sure. So I've been working in SEO since 2003, uh, although I didn't pick up an SEO title until maybe 2005 or six, um, and have been mostly in-house with some uh, mostly startup companies and uh, now currently am with a company called Self Financial. I've been with them a couple of years. I'm a VP of marketing, so includes... SEO and social content marketing and a bit of PR and brand as well. Awesome. And uh, I know you've worked with uh, a lot of great companies and uh, have had really heavy influence on a lot of SEO, especially in markets like Austin, where it feels like anybody I talk to in Austin knows Jeff Smith. Uh, so you've, you've definitely, definitely been around and made it, made an impact. Uh, and that's great. Yeah, I'm oh. a, a bit of a grandpa in the uh, <laughs> consumer tech in Austin <laughs> scene. We'll stick with like guru or SEO master or something like that <laughs> instead of uh, aging you too much. Um, well, and, and I know uh, working at some of these big companies and even startups, you've had a lot of great success in your SEO career and uh, you've been a part of uh, seeing companies really grow their SEO program, mature, become leaders in some instances as well. So uh, maybe you could just tell us a little bit about how you got started working in the, in the industry. Sure. Um, so, to talk about how I got started in SEO, I'm gonna go back before it a couple of years because I, I think it actually directly influenced uh, my ability to do SEO and, uh, and everything that came after. So I had been working uh, with teenage uh, special needs students, so high school students, uh, <clears throat> which required a lot of um, explaining of things, particularly things I didn't necessarily know about. And uh, I did that for a couple of years and transitioned to working for a newspaper, you know, right sort of in the death throes of the local news era, uh, became an editor of a newspaper up in New Hampshire and uh, Vermont. And I moved further into Vermont, needed a job, and there happened to be a website, one of the few websites in Vermont at the time. Uh, this would have been around 2003, uh, 2002, 2003. Um, and they needed an editor, and I was an editor. Mm. So I uh, got this job at this little website called Cyber Rentals. It was a very early site that had launched in 1995. Uh, and they hired me as an editor, both for the website and for the printed magazine uh, that they were publishing. And what editing a website turned out to be was very much like what SEO became. So it was, uh, you know, the descriptions of the pages, the page titles, um, and it was a very small company, just about 10 people. So everyone had to take turns doing uh, the inbound email. And part of the inbound email at the time, 2003, this was still an era of link exchange. So, you know, mm. I'll put a link to your site if you link to mine. And, and so I did a lot of that. Totally cool. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's, it's all in the past. Um, <laughs> Now we have to earn the links. We have to earn. Um, so, but then that that little website uh, within a couple of years was acquired by a startup in uh, Austin, the company that came to be called HomeAway, which is now known as VRBO. Mm. Um, and when I moved to Austin to continue working for that business, they migrated the website to a new platform and a lot of those links that I had worked on for a couple of years broke and uh, the traffic started to go down and I was the person who said, Hey, I think you broke a lot of those links and those are kind of important. <laughs> um, and from there I sort of was just moved over to think about and work on SEO full time. Um, and then that, that company was a very kind of 
aggressive growing startup, very complex, acquired a lot of websites. And so that presented me with many, many learning opportunities for, you know, uh, SEO at scale, international SEO, technical SEO, yeah. content, link development, all those good things. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I remember uh, watching Home, Home Away and all the other brands that were uh, associated with it were just exploding. I mean, it was just such rapid growth. So uh, I'm sure there was, a, there was a lot of crash course learning uh, that was happening back there. And it's, it's funny, it kind of always just starts with links somehow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we always tie back to links. It, it never goes away. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so uh, just to, uh, you know, change gears a little bit uh, and, you know, learning from links being, and it's interesting, you know, we talked to so many, so many SEOs that I've talked to over the years, they have so many different backgrounds. There's the people who came in through content or uh, people that are just super technical and they were building sites and they came in that way. Uh, I mean, I've talked to quite a few calculus majors or just people digging math and love Excel and somehow someone said, you should do that SEO thing. Um, but, uh, and so it, it's interesting how so many SEOs have so many different skill sets, uh, and often it just works because SEO requires a, just a lot of different ways of thinking and approaching it. Um, but I'm sure, uh, back, back when you were, uh, thrown into the SEO, SEO world, uh, there was probably some skills, uh, that you wish you would have had back then, or, or maybe something you could have learned a little bit earlier. So, uh, you know, thinking back to transitioning out of being, uh, in the writing and being more focused on SEO, uh, what were some skills that you wish you had back then that you think may have helped accelerate your, uh, uh, made things a little bit easier? One is uh, better quantitative skills. So for me, with my background in education and as an English major, working on a newspaper, focusing on the words, uh, I didn't necessarily have the most developed quantitative skills. So. I had to learn the basics of Excel and get kind of more complex as the demands on me increased and raise my game. And, and that was all a very sort of gradual process of running into walls. You know, I, I, I need to do this thing, but I don't know how to do it or how to get over that wall and just seeking help from other people in other parts of the companies I worked in. Uh, taking some courses and so on. And so, so developing quantitative skills earlier um, would have been helpful. Um, and I think I've always maintained about just enough. Uh, I, I certainly <laughs> uh, couldn't work in accounting or finance today. I think I have just enough to get done what I need to do. And then, uh, the, then that relates to the other skill I wish I had maybe developed more pointedly earlier, which is not an SEO skill per se, but people management skills. Mm. Um, one of the things that happened with me and that I see happen with others is that you, you know, you, maybe you start working in SEO and you get reasonably good at it. Mm. And maybe the organization that you're working for says, great. Uh, if you're doing this well with this, you should do even better with more people, right? And then you have to hire people. And in my case, uh, I didn't know how to hire people or once I did hire them, how to manage them uh, and then to help them develop in their careers. And so all of that, just like with the quantitative piece, was a uh, learning as I'm going, try to read a lot, try to talk to other managers and just watch them and see you know, how they're doing it and what resonated with me and not to kind of find my own way. And then related to that was also something I see in the SEO space and other spaces as well as when you, you land in sort of a subject matter expert position within a company, yeah. it can be hard to let go sometimes uh, and to, you know, train someone else and trust them to do the work and maybe just give them some guidance to let and let them do it their own way rather than, yeah. feeling like you both need to have them do work and also do it yourself. Um, so those are things I think that part of it is, you know, just maturity. Part of it is more pointedly management training. So 
you know, that, uh, both of those or neither of those are, are SEO skills per se, but I think that given at the time, especially a lot of SEO was so uh, specific to itself where you could only learn uh, by trying things yeah. Yeah. that um, it's really these other areas that help, you know, could have helped uh, develop faster. Yeah, you know, I, I tell people all the time, I feel like being an SEO, there's no other job I know where not only do you have to learn how to be good at your job and you learn from like learning from others, but then you have to explain to other people in the company what the heck your job is. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's like, it's it really, it has to be super tough, especially in a big enterprise where there's, you know, politics, uh, you have the dev queue, you have just so many things going on. So I... I could see where uh, being really good uh, at all the things with an SEO, including educating other people in an organization is difficult than trying to be, become a good manager. And, you know, that makes me just think of one other, uh, one other question to this too, because I, I know you do mentor a lot of SEOs uh, and there's a lot of people that have worked for you in the past that are now pretty successful in their own role uh, at big enterprises or at startups as well. Uh, do you have like one piece of advice you always consistently come back with them at? Continuously learning uh, is something I've, I've probably talked with everybody about and I, that I try to do myself because, I mean, I think that's just true in life. If you can keep learning whatever it is, then you kind of, you know, stay fresh and stay young and interesting. But in SEO specifically, even though as we joked a little bit about, links still matter, <laughs> we're still doing that. Yeah. Um, there's probably a thousand other things that have changed and to, you know, learn. And I think today even <clears throat> to be successful in SEO, especially if you want to become or you find yourself in a leadership position where you are explaining to executives or you're hiring people or working with agencies, um, to be able to understand the other functions you're working with, you know, for example, like conversion rate optimization or usability and user research to me are um, almost just as much a part of SEO and understanding how all these things relate to each other is mm -hmm. important. And if I were a person who wasn't interested in learning more at some point, my career probably would have ended. <laughs> so. At super valid. We we survey uh, we survey SEOs all the time about where they are prioritizing their time and how they're spending it. And so often, the number one complaint they have is not enough time to learn. So I think mm. hearing that is really important to them. That there's you're not going to get ahead in the SEO world if you're not committed to the continuous learning. So that's such a great point. Um, okay, a little bit of a fun question. Let's pretend we built a time machine. Uh, we're going to go way back in history. 10 years, right, so far back. Uh, and if there was one thing you could tell yourself or you could call up uh, any other, uh, you know, SEO thought leader that's out there about uh, how the industry has changed, what, what would be the thing that you would call out first? What's, what's the thing that you would shout from the mountaintop? Like, this is going to happen. Be prepared. Uh, be patient. Um, for a couple reasons. One is that some things that seem like they're going to happen quickly don't. And I think back to like when mobile SEO every year it was, this is the year of mobile. This yeah. is the year of mobile. And that took like four years. Um, and then it really, really was mobile. Yeah. Uh, and so being patient. The other thing though that has surprised me is I thought surely by now either SEO would be done, dead, not a thing that either because Google particularly would have figured out all it needs to figure out how to serve all the things it needs to serve from all the sources of information it needs. Yeah. And therefore there would be no need for someone to do a thing called SEO. Um, or that companies would actually be good at doing what they need to do, whether that is publish content that's actually valuable and useful or have, you know, engineering teams that prioritize page performance, things of that nature. And the reality is, no, all of those things still need someone. 
Uh, Google needs people doing SEO in organizations, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, and companies need someone to, you know, find these uh, cross connections and explain all of these things and help move them all forward. Um, so yeah, having a having a long view um, and you know believing that this will still be a thing until we know otherwise, being patient and and even again back to the links point is like by now I thought surely Google would have figured out how to run things without needing links as a signal and yet it's 2020 they still are so yeah, yeah. still part of the function. <laughs> yeah, I think that would definitely be sound advice to give yourself. I mean, it, it, I think patience, if we could all go back in time and tell ourselves, just be patient, uh, pay close attention, uh, that definitely would be, <laughs> I think, the best advice we could give ourselves. Uh, so that's awesome. All right, I have one last question for you, Jeff. Uh, and uh, I don't care if you answer this related to SEO or not. This is uh, inquiring minds want to know. Uh, so uh, with all this quarantine that's happening, we have a, we. We wish we had more free time. I feel like we're all working a little bit more, probably more than we should. But uh, if you've had a chance to uh, read a good book lately, uh, what was the last good one that you've read? The the last good book I read uh, was book six of a six book series by a Norwegian writer named Karlov Knausgaard. And... I, I mentioned it in part not only because I was really blown away by the whole thing, but I'm also proud of myself for finishing all six <laughs> books because they totaled about 3,500 pages oh and it took about a year. <laughs> um, wow. and the last book was the largest at, I don't know, 1,200. It was, it was a monster. Um, so, and I didn't read it in the original Norwegian. I'm not that proud of myself because I can't do that, but I did read the translation. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I also can't recommend it for everybody because it's pretty particular, uh, but yeah. it is interesting. So maybe, maybe watch an interview with him on YouTube first before deciding to embark on this potentially year long odyssey. Uh, it, it goes to show your commitment, right? Start something and get it done. <laughs> yes. And, and that I was patient. <laughs> patient. See? Yes. Patient. I think that is one adjective. Uh, there's a few adjectives I think I have for you, but I have always noticed uh, you've always been very calm and very patient. I mean, handsome and there's a variety of people. <laughs> right? so, uh, awesome. Jeff, well, any, anything that I didn't ask that uh, you wanted to share? Um, no, I, th I think those are good questions. Awesome. Great. Well, thanks so much. We really appreciate your time and, uh, you know, congratulations on all the success you've had. Thank you.